I am really excited to make this video. It's my second time trying. Everything didn't work well the first time, but I think it's all set now to work the right way. Fingers crossed that this is actually what goes up. So someone commented on one of the masking tutorial videos asking for a very specific use case, and I'm excited to make this tutorial to answer that question and to demonstrate how to mask when you have a pretty unusual hearing loss. So here's the comment that came from lol princes, lol princess, maybe, anyway, this is the comment. It says, I don't know if you still make videos. I do. I know it takes me a long time, but I do. And it says, but I would love to see air masking, air conduction and bone conduction when the ears that are worse switch. For example, if the left ear is worse in the high frequencies and the right is worse in the, le in the low frequencies. This is a really uh, cool case. It's a great case for learning because it forces you to mask air conduction and bone conduction, but only at some frequencies in both ears. So you kind of have to double check everything when you do it. Uh, so it's a really good learning case. I'm not surprised that you're asking about this because it's, people are probably testing you on it if you're using the simulator. So let's go into Theta. So I've logged into Theta. I'm in the sandbox course that every user has access to. So you can follow these exact same steps and uh, practice this kind of a case on your own. I'll show you how to design the case and then we'll walk through how to complete it and how to check for masking. So to create this case, we're gonna go into the design tab and we've already got audiometry checked, so we'll just click go. And then you can click create audiogram to design this specific case. So right now we've got a normal, flat, sensory neural, nothing crazy. So to design this case, we're gonna go from normal to moderate, and we're gonna change the configuration from flat to sloping in the left ear. And this will give us that poorer hearing in the high frequencies in the left ear. And in the right ear, we said we wanted poor hearing in the low frequencies, so we're going to also go normal to moderate. But instead of sloping, we're going to do a rising loss in this ear. So we'll create that audiogram, and this, is, this one looks really good. We've got poor hearing in one ear in the low frequencies, and poor hearing in the other ear ear in the high frequencies. Just to look at what this looks like, you can unsplit the audiogram, and this is uh, why I call these kinds of cases a crisscross audiogram, because when you overlay it, it looks like a, a crisscross. So uh, there's a case I make for my students called applesauce, and it's this kind of audiogram, because it makes you mask air conduction at some frequencies and bone conduction at others. So once you've created the case, it's time to jump right in and practice it. I am gonna change one setting though before we go. So if you go to the settings tab under case settings, you can auto fill the audiogram with the unmasked thresholds only. And this will pre-fill the audiogram with the unmasked air and bone. So all we have to focus on is figuring out when to mask and actually doing the masking. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go into the case now that we've turned that setting on and you'll see now we've got all of the unmasked air and unmasked bone conduction pre-filled for us. So we just saved ourselves a ton of time. We can just focus on practicing, figuring out when to mask and how to do it. So the first thing that I'd practice right here is looking at the air conduction to see if air conduction masking is going to be required at any of these frequencies. So let's look at the right ear. To check and see if air conduction is gonna to need to be masked, we're gonna compare the air conduction of the test ear to the non-test ear bone conduction. And we're looking for an, uh, a difference between those two that's greater than or equal to the interaural attenuation. So we're using TDH 50 headphones with an interaural attenuation of 40 dB. And so if we present a sound at 45 dB HL in the right ear, it's going to lose 40 dB as it passes over to the non-test ear. So in that crossover process, it'll be reduced by 40 dB. So it will be heard by bone conduction at 5 dB HL. Is that audible to the left ear? Yeah, they've got a bone conduction threshold right here at 5. So it's possible that playing this 45 dB HL sound in the left ear, or in the right ear, excuse me, at 250 hertz, was actually heard by the left ear. So we're not really sure this response is real. If you wanna learn more about determining how to mask air conduction, we've got a video for that and I will post a link to it. So we do need to mask air conduction here at 250. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to turn masking on in the non-test ear and actually let me zoom in real quick on 
so you can see this a little bit better. So I just changed the view. I'm still in theta, but I'm just changing the view a little bit so you can see a little bit better what's going on here. So my initial stimulus level is going to be the unmasked air conduction threshold. This is the threshold that I think might be uh, not real. It might be a response from the non-test ear. So I'm going to start there, and then the masking needs to go in at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad. And then we're going to present our stimulus, and we get no response, so we're going to increase our, uh, our stimulus level. No response, increase the stimulus. We get a response, so we increase the masker. Get another response, increase the masker. This is the second time. Increase the masker a third time. And we got our three level plateau. This should be the true mass threshold at 250 hertz. Now let's look at 500 hertz. The unmasked threshold at 500 hertz was at 45 dB HL. So that is gonna lose 40 dB as it crosses over to the non-test ear and be heard at 5 dB HL. Is a 5 dB HL sound audible to the non-test ear? No, it's below threshold. So their best threshold at 500 hertz in the non-test ear is 10 dB HL. So it's not likely that they're going to be able to hear a 5 dB HL sound in that ear. So um, I think we're actually done masking air conduction in this ear. We can check as well at 1000 hertz. At 1000 hertz it's 45, it's gonna lose 40 crossing over, and we see that the 5 dB crossed over sound is going to be uh, not audible compared to the bone conduction threshold at 1000 hertz. All these other thresholds are actually better than the left ear threshold, so I think we're actually done masking in the right ear. So we'll go over to the left ear. In the low frequencies, we've got really good hearing, so we're not concerned about masking uh, those frequencies because it's not likely that these soft sounds crossed over and were heard by the non-test ear. But let's look at where these levels start getting a little bit louder and the risk of crossover is greater. So um, let's start at 2000 hertz. A 35 dB HL sound is gonna lose 40 dB as it crosses over. It would be heard at negative 5 dB HL at 2000 Hertz. And uh, that's well below the threshold in that ear, so we're not concerned about masking there. Looking at 3000 Hertz, 40 is gonna lose 40 dB as it crosses over. At 3K, it'll be a zero dB sound that crosses over. Compared to a 10 dB threshold, we're below threshold. We're not concerned about masking 3K. Uh, let's look at 4K. We got a 45 dB HL sound at 4000 Hertz. That's going to lose 40 and it's going to cross over at 5 dB HL. We don't need to mask that. At 6 and uh, 8000 Hertz, we didn't test bone conduction. So we're in a little bit of a predicament here. We usually make an air to bone comparison in the non test here. But if we don't, if you can't measure the bone conduction thresholds, or if you don't measure the bone conduction thresholds at those frequencies, you make an air to air comparison, assuming that the air conduction threshold in the non test ear should be pretty close to the bone conduction if it's sensory neural. A 45 dB threshold at 6000 Hz compared to a 10 dB threshold, that difference is not greater than the interval attenuation, so we don't need to mask there either. So then we're going to look at 8000 Hz, where we've got a threshold at 55. That 55 dB HL sound is going to lose 40 dB as it crosses over and uh, we'll have 15 dB of energy at 8,000 Hertz. Now it's possible that the bone conduction threshold at 8,000 Hertz in the right ear is around the air conduction threshold. So um, it's possible that this frequency, this threshold here, is the listener responding to hearing the sound in the right ear where they have good hearing that's just crossed over. So we do need to mask we're going to start at the unmasked threshold in the left ear, and in the right ear we're going to put the masker at the unmasked air conduction threshold and add our 10 dB safety pad, and then we'll present We get a response, so we're going to raise the masker. We get a response, so we raise the masker, and right there, right off the bat, we got our plateau, so we'll just go ahead and save this as the mask threshold. We can check ourselves by toggling the true audio on since we did this in practice mode. And you'll see that uh, we don't have any of our air conduction thresholds, none of them change. 
so we can be pretty confident that we did the right audiogram here. We didn't get a lot of chances to practice masking in this particular case, but um, I hope that this was helpful. So let's go to bone conduction. Remember, bone conduction masking needs to be performed anytime there's an air bone gap greater than 10 dB. And that's just because it changes our diagnosis. If we have an air bone gap bigger than 10 dB, then we say it's a conductive loss. But if it's uh, smaller than 10 dB, then it could be sensory neural. In these cases, wherever there's a big air bone gap, we're not really sure if that's a real air bone gap or if it's because the non-test ear was responding. So for example, in the low frequencies, the better hearing is in the left ear. And so these right ear bone conduction thresholds might be the better hearing left ear responding. Or it could really be that there's this huge conductive loss in the low frequencies from otitis media or some other pathology that's causing there to be this huge conductive loss. So the only way to be sure is to mask because there's a greater than 10 dB air bone gap here. And uh, there are two scenarios. We could mask and this threshold could not move. And in that case, we know that it's a conductive loss, but um, we could also mask and it could close this gap and be uh, determined to be a sensory neural loss. So really the, the need to mask is the need to confirm, is this loss conductive or is this loss sensory neural? So let's go ahead and do that. To mask 250 hertz by bone conduction, we're gonna start at the unmasked threshold in the test here, and we're gonna put masking in at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear. We're gonna add a 10 dB safety pad, and then we also have to factor in the occlusion effect. So we're going to add in a 20 dB occlusion effect at 250 hertz, um, and then we'll go ahead and present. And there's no response, so we're gonna raise the stimulus level until we get a response from the patient. So we've got a response, and now we're going to increase the masker to see if we cover up that response. Raise the stimulus, raise the masker, raise the stimulus, raise the masker. So we do this 5 dB dance until we get to a point where we either plateau or we hit the limits of the audiometer. So right here, we've hit the limits of the audiometer. We can't go any higher, but we're effectively masking and there's no response from the patient. So we're actually gonna mark this as a no response mask threshold at 250. We weren't quite able to get all the way up to the true threshold. Some people might save this as, uh, as, not a, as a no response. They might just save it as a mask threshold because we closed that gap um, I'm personally opposed to that because we didn't actually get a patient response. So uh, saving it as a true response wouldn't be right to me. Let's do this again at 500 hertz and I wanna show you a little trick. So we've got our masking uh, almost set up. We're gonna put masking in in the non-test ear, air conduction threshold plus 10 dB safety pad, plus some uh, the occlusion effect for that frequency and the low frequency. And you know that took a long time to go up five, up five, up five, up five, raising the mask or raising the stimulus. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a little shortcut that people take. And when they present and they don't get a response, instead of going up by five, they say, well, my goal here is to close this huge air bone gap. So I'm gonna close it a little bit faster. I'm gonna go up in 10 dB steps. And so they'll raise the stimulus by 10 dB and they get a response. So they raise the mask or 10 dB and they go up in 10 dB increments until they get close and then they start getting a masker response. They start getting a response with the masker and then you can save the threshold as the true threshold. Sometimes your bone conduction threshold will be off by five dB if you do it this way. I just wanted to point out that trick that you'll probably see people do in the real world to save a little bit of time. We'll finish up in the left ear, we'll set the masker level at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus 10 dB safety pad plus a little extra for the occlusion effect and we'll start masking trying to find the plateau. We'll present. No response so we raise our stimulus. Raise the masker 10. And since I'm close I'll, I'll go up in 5 dB steps now. 
until I find the true threshold. One, two, I got three responses where I raised the masker three times, and so I'm gonna go ahead and save that as my final mask threshold. So the right ear should be good now. Let's switch over to the left and finish this up. In the left ear, we're gonna to need to mask wherever there's an air bone gap that's greater than 10 dB. It looks like at 2000 Hertz, we have just a 10 dB air bone gap. So it look, even though there's a gap here, you probably don't need to mask. You could if you wanted to be absolutely sure, but um, we're following the rules here that if it's, a, if it's 15 or more, that's when we're gonna mask. So let's look at 3K. That's the first frequency that has a huge air bone gap, and so we wanna close that up. So we're gonna start with our masker at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear. We're gonna add 10 dB, and then we're gonna add the occlusion effect. Oh wait, just kidding. There isn't an occlusion effect that's really significant in the higher frequencies. So all we have to do is add our 10 dB safety pad to uh, get us started with masking. So we're gonna present, no response. And I see these huge air bone gaps. I'm thinking that this person probably has sensory neural hearing loss. I'm not gonna go up in five dB steps. I'm gonna go up in 10 dB steps to save some time. So we'll go up by 10. They respond, so I'll go raise the masker 10, up by 10, masker 10, and then I'll go up in fives since I'm getting pretty close to the true threshold. And there I've raised the masker three or four times, so I'll save that true threshold. Last one, we're in the home stretch. So we'll set the masker at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear. I, I feel like I sound like a broken record, but hopefully it helps to hear it said over and over and over again. Air conduction threshold of the non-test ear. We're gonna add a 10 dB safety pad. No occlusion effect because we're measuring in the high frequencies. So we're gonna start our masking and I'm gonna go up in 10 dB steps to save some time. Again, this would totally work in five dB steps if you're uh, not sure. One, two, three, we got three responses with raising the masker level. And so we're done. We'll turn the masker off so the patient doesn't get annoyed and just check our work by showing the true audiogram. And there's no difference between the true audiogram and the other audiogram, so we've done it. So you can see back here in the full view, if we overlap, we've got our little crisscross applesauce audiogram. And I hope that this uh, video was helpful as you try your own crisscross audiograms. Uh, if you run into problems, snags, comment in this video. I'm happy to respond and give you any tips and pointers to help you with it. So what other kinds of audiograms do you want to know about? I'm happy to make a video like this for whatever case you want to see demoed for learning how to mask different kinds of scenarios and different kinds of hearing losses. So post in the comments a hearing loss that you want to see demoed and I'm happy to run through that in another video. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.